731 right now. The president's choice for a new Supreme Court justice will be announced tonight in prime time. President Trump met last week with several potential candidates for the job and has narrowed his search down, as he says, to four. And joining us now with a look at the judges on the short list, Fred Lawrence, who is a distinguished lecturer at Georgetown Law and also serves as CEO of the Phi Beta Kappa Society. Good to see you this morning. Good Thanks morning. for coming Good in. To be with you. Uh, before we get to the four, and, and we'll break them all down here, sure. the process itself, this primetime announcement, what are your thoughts on how that process it's is determined? Uh, highly unusual for people who are in the constitutional law business. We're used to this being done with a president in great discretion, interviews a number of people, and then makes his choice. But this idea of almost doing it like a reality TV show, sort of wondering which judge is going to get the rose tonight at 9 o'clock, uh, we've never lived through anything like this before. Definitely different, although everybody is still wondering who will, quote, get that rose well, that you there, talk there about. There will be big ratings tonight. I'll, I'll, I'll be watching. Let's talk about a few of them right now, and we'll break through. First of all, uh, let's talk about Brett Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh, I think, had risen to be one of the front right runners here from the beginning, although right. possibly some questions about the Roe versus Wade take here. What do you think about well, Brett Kavanaugh? I think Brett Kavanaugh has been uh, on the short list for a long time. but He's very close to the Bush family. He actually worked in the Bush White House, then became a Court of Appeals judge appointed by George W. Bush and has been there for more than a decade. So there are those who say that that connection with the Bush family actually makes him not of interest to the mm. uh, inner circle in the Trump administration. Which, which is interesting. Brett Kavanaugh, also a local guy, grew up in Bethesda, went to Georgetown That's Prep, very right. familiar with the inner doings of Washington. And he has the added advantage of being a Anthony Kennedy clerk. So, in fact, there's a very famous picture of his being sworn into the Court of Appeals by Justice Kennedy. All right. Judge Amy Coney Barrett, what, are, uh, what Amy, do we think about Amy Coney Barrett? Amy Coney Barrett? Barrett has gotten a lot of, uh, of talk recently. She's the youngest of these four. She is the least experienced on the bench. She's only been on the bench about a year. A very well-known, very conservative law professor from Notre Dame, who then had the famous confirmation hearing where Dianne Feinstein said that the dogma lives strong within you. Many people took a lot of exception to that and thought that that was a religious test of sorts. Dianne Feinstein said it really wasn't that. Mm. But there is a concern from some on the liberal side of the spectrum for that. But she certainly has a great, compelling life story, seven children, mm -hmm. um, great academic record. Raymond Catledge. Raymond Catledge um, is known as Gorsuch 2.0. Um, he has been on the federal bench also for about 10 years. Uh, and in many ways may be the one who is the easiest to confirm. There's sort of the, the least on, on him uh, that might cause a problem and a very solid, solid conservative record. However, there's been some talk on him just over the weekend. This came out of Breitbart um, that his immigration position may not be sufficiently hardcore for this administration. Uh, which is uh, also could be said to be the case with Thomas Hardiman, who has kind of emerged as a bit of a dark horse here, who has ruled in favor of immigrants in the past. Well, you know, I was looking over my notes on the way over here, and on Friday, I talked with your producer about putting some pictures up on the screen. This was the one picture we hadn't talked about. Mm -hmm. It wasn't going to be Thomas Hardiman. But over the weekend, he seems to have come up. Uh, Hardiman is a Third Circuit judge. He, before that, was a trial judge. He's known to be close with the president's sister, which may have some factor, but he's got a great life story. He's the first in his family to go to college. He drove a cab in Waltham, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. which I have to say has a special place in my heart. I was the president of Brandeis University in Waltham, Mass., so I know those guys who hacked cabs in Waltham. But he's got a great life story, and he's been on the bench uh, for a long time and may just be the one. If you asked me if I had a favorite at this mm -hmm. point, I, th I think Hardiman coming up the rail, and he may be the one. You talk about your Massachusetts roots, so I have to talk about my Pittsburgh roots, which is where he is right now. His wife's family, though, prominent Democratic uh, judges, including the current district attorney. That's, that's correct. That's correct. And no one knows any more about what is actually going to throw somebody on or off the process. And we've watched people come on and off the list. There were people who, when I was here a week ago, we were talking about, we're not even talking about it anymore. Hard to know. Here's the key, and when it comes down to the decision that uh, we will hear the results of tonight at 9 o'clock from the president, uh, however you and your fellow scholars and attorneys will look at things uh, is different from how the president will look at things. He tends to like that person he has the closest personal relationship with, uh, the so-called feel factor. I feel like this will be the best person to represent. Based on what we can tell about this president, who might stand out well, to him? I'm, I'm guessing Hardiman, because at the end of the day, Hardiman could be the one whose life story speaks to this president. The one thing, however, that's true of all four of them is they will tilt this, car, this court further to the right than at any time in our lifetime. And the importance there is that this is not just something uh, for this administration. This is something that will live long beyond this administration. Every one of these four could be expected to serve on the court for a minimum of 20 years, assuming that they have the 
the, the health and the strength to do it. But their age says 20 years, possibly 30 years. So long after this administration, this could be the longest reach yep. of this administration. All relatively young, uh, I believe between 46 and 53. That so. is correct. Yep. That right. is hey, correct. great to see you. Pleasure Thanks so much for your insight this morning. We'll all be watching tonight. We'll find out at 9 o'clock.